In the last episode of our recursive type series, we started by talking about how we can extract certain types from nested types by using recursion. Now, in this video, we will talk about how we can manipulate existing types and create new ones by only like changing certain types in our existing type. So let me show you how we can do this. So let's say we have a type here, person. And let's say this has an info property in there and this should have a birth date property, which is of type date. Now we have a name property, which is a string. And let's say we have like a creation property, which is also a date. This is like the timestamp of this, when this person was created in, for example, a database. Now let's say we create such a person here and we have this info here, which is it's a birth date, which is a new date. And we have our name, which is just my name. Now we have the creation here, which to keep it simple, also it is just a date. Now let's take a look at this type person. Now what we could do, of course, is if we want to send this person to our backend, then maybe we don't want to send the dates as an, a date object to our backend, but just as simple strings. So what we could do is we could just take this person here and let's say we want to create like a backend person type. And now instead of this being a, a date, we say we want to pass it a string and here it should be a string too. Now we could do this manually each time and for each date we could change this to a string. But this is quite error prone because if you, for example, change the person and you maybe add another property, which is also a date, then you could maybe forget to change this in backend person. So let's now take a look at how we can do this in a more recursive way and in by creating a new type by using an existing one. So the first thing is we just remove our backend person here and let's create a dynamic type, a generic type, and let's call this type date replacer. Now, what will this type take? It will take a generic type T and for example, we will pass it our person. And now what we will do in this type is we will loop over our keys of our person. So we will loop over info and creation and then access its value and the type of, of this value basically. So what we say here is, okay, we have our new type by using curly braces and we then have our brackets and we can say, okay, the key is, it's like a variable has to be in. And now we have to specify where we want to loop over and we can say key of T. Now, what does this key of T do? Basically it will create a new type, which has only info and creation in it. So we loop over this new type and now we can say, okay, for each of the values we find for each of the values of this info and creation, we will then check for its value type. It's the type of, for example, info and creation. So we can then say, okay, if date extends the type of this key, so we can say our T here, and we can say we want to access the key property. Now this maybe looks a little bit a little bit strange, but this is exactly the same as we would do if we would, for example, say person and then here info in JavaScript. We can do exactly the same with types. So what we do here is we access the person info property. So let's see how this works. We could say, for example, our person info here, and then we could say person info, and then we can access the type of this info object here of this info object type basically. And this is exactly what we do in this, this T key here. So we check if this T key, which for example, for the, in the first loop, it's this type here, extend state. So if it would do this, so we use a question mark, if it does extend, in this case, we would just switch it to string otherwise. And this is the case, for example, here in info, because this info here does not extend this uh, a date. It contains a date, but the shape of this type is not the shape of a type of a date. So in the first case here, we will just return the key here, the, the, the type of the key. So we will just return this here. 
But the second time we loop over it, we will check for the creation. Yes, this T key, which in this case is T creation, it extends the date type here. So in this case, we switch it to it being a string. So now let's see what happens here. We can now say, okay, this person here is this object person is not just a person we can use date replacer on it, pass it in our person. And now we can see line 18 is no longer compiled because now this creation property needs a string. So if we change this to string, we can see this compiles fine. Now, what's the problem with this still which we can still see is that the birth date here still is a normal date, but we also want this to be a string. And this is where we have to use recursion because we just loop over the most outer properties here over info and creation. We don't go inside these complex types. And this is why we have to change this type to recursively call into our subtypes. So in this case, let's see if we loop over info. So this key here is info in this case. Now we check, okay, is this, is this type here with birth date and name extending date? And it's not because it's, it contains a date, but it's not just a date. It's like an object type with a name and birth date in it. And in this case, we say, okay, we don't want to just return this type here and go on. We want to recursively call into it. So what we can say here is we want to just call date replacer again with our inner type here. So we pass it in here and because we're calling it again, we will then check for the birth date again. And we can see now this does no longer work because now it also checks the birth date, this inner type, if it's a valid string or not. So because it's a date, we switch it to a string. So now this has to be a string too. And by using this approach, we can now not only change the outer parts of our types, but also deeply nested properties, which can be really, really deep in our object. We don't really care because we are using these recursive calls. Now, of course, this now is just called a date replacer, but wouldn't it be nice if we could change this to be able to pass in more properties to be able to change other types. So if you, for example, could pass in in this date replacer, what we want to search for in this case, a date and what do we want to replace it with? So in this case, a string. Now, of course we can do this by making it more generic. We can say, okay, this date replacer here is no longer called date replacer. Let's just call this replacer. And now instead of this being a fixed type date and a fixed type string here, we can just say we pass these in. We say this is our search and this here is our replace. Now we can just use here our search instead of our date and our replace instead of our string. And now we just have, of course, to pass this in into our recursive call. So we pass in search and replace. And as we can see now, everything still works as expected, but now we are able to pass in different types and replace it with something else. So for example, what we could do is we could say, okay, we no longer want to allow for example, strings in there, we always want to replace it with a number. So we can say we pass in string here and want to replace it with number. Now we can see the birth date has of course to be a date again, because we are not longer looking to replace the date. And this one of course has to be a date too, but now the name, and it doesn't really make sense in this, in this case, but you see what I, what we can achieve with this now has to be a number. So by using this approach, we can really easy create new types from existing ones without having to write all the code ourselves. And if we would change something here in the person, then we can be sure that it also is reflected in our new types we create. Now, before we end, let's clean this code up a little bit and also create a new type from our replacer, not just like pass it in here in our inline object creation. So the first thing what we do is we create a new type from this replacer. We call this 
backend person like this. We change this back from string to date and here to string. And we change this here back, of course, to a string here to my name and here down here also a string. And now you can see what we've done is we have an existing type person. We used recursion and manipulated our existing type by replacing certain types of certain properties. For example, here in this case, a date and created a new type really, really. And it's really, really easy to understand what this replacer does. And we can clearly see how we can use this really easy. And in the next episode of our recursive type series, we will create our own utility types by using recursion. And we will be able to pass in just certain type informations and create really complex new types from it. So we'll not manipulate like existing types, but like create new types basically out of thin air. So thank you for watching and see you soon.